When necessary, the light tank can often be easily hidden in cover for the purpose of observing the enemy's movements or engaging him with fire. Can you discover the tank concealed somewhere in this picture? It is within 20 yards of you. He can see you and his guns are trained on you. Will you only know of his presence when he has opened fire? That might and probably would be too late. But the primary object in handling light tanks is to use their mobility to the full, thereby increasing their fighting power. You must therefore be always on the alert to recognize tanks, even though they are moving quickly, and so avoid being taken by surprise as they may attack you from any direction. Observe how quickly these vehicles can move across country. You must make up your mind, ours or enemy. But when it comes to an obstacle, the tank must reduce its speed. If it be an enemy, that is the best moment to engage it with anti-tank weapons. But you must be sure. Obviously, you must not shoot up one of our own tanks. Now a few more tips as to how to recognize them. Note the height in comparison with the NCO standing beside it, who is exactly six feet tall. Observe the relative position of the turret to the rest of the body. It is set well back towards the rear of the vehicle, and this is a peculiarity of the two light tanks we are now examining. And see also how the bottom of the rear end of the turret projects above the armor plating of the body. This is an offside view and you can see the exhaust and silencer carried to the rear. Here is the sprocket wheel, which is driven by the mechanism. It is in front on these light tanks, and the teeth fit into recesses on the track, which passes over a guide roller, which keeps it in position. Here you see the tank jacked up, and the sprocket wheel and tracks in operation. Now watch this, because it is interesting. As a track vehicle moves, its bogey wheels pass along the tracks, which, while in contact with the ground, are stationary. But when the rear wheel reaches the end of the stationary track, the track is picked up by the sprocket wheel and relayed on the ground to form a further path for the bogey wheels. Here you get a close view of the track and bogies as the tank moves along. You observe the suspension, powerful springs on either side of each pair of bogies. Yes, they will stand some jolts. Take another look at the light tank. See the driver dismounting. He sits on one side of the front of the tank, and on the other is a feature which renders recognition easy, an air inlet cover over the engine which looks like a slab, and which is quite distinctive of these two light tanks. One final glance as it takes a water splash at speed. Make sure you will recognize it again when you see it. Here is another type of British light tank, different in appearance from those you have just seen. A crew of three, driver, commander and gunner. Notice the height of this little tank and that it has a periscope for the commander. A telescopic sight for the gunner and a bulletproof window as well. You see the shape of the driver's cover and the method of closing down the top of the turret. It has four large bogey wheels filling the whole space between the tracks. The rear bogey has teeth and also acts as a driving sprocket, a characteristic which distinguishes this tank. Have a look at the armament, a gun for firing shells as well as a machine gun. Though a light tank, it is very powerfully armed. The view from behind the tank is quite distinctive, as the slotted air passages to the engine compartment are very apparent. Here you see the contrast between this tank and the one you saw earlier, and can compare the height of each with that of a man. Watch them and see if you can spot them as they go past you. Yes, that was the one you saw first. And this is the fellow with the gun, as well as the machine gun, which you've just been examining. And now have a look at the enemy. Can you spot any differences? 
the shape and slope of the turret are different. While his five bogey wheels, round, but filling only half of the space between the tracks, are unlike either of ours. Also notice a characteristic of most German tanks. The wireless mast is not close to the turret like ours, but away from it, mounted on the hull. The difference between an armoured car and a tank is that the car runs on wheels and the tank on tracks. Our armoured cars, like our tanks, give complete cover to their crew since they are fully protected with armour. They usually possess greater speed on roads and over level ground and they are as silent in operation as ordinary cars. Their capacity for surmounting obstacles is limited and less than that of the tank. You will therefore expect to find them operating in open level country or in areas well provided with roads. They are capable of offensive and defensive action. This particular armoured car is a guy. Notice how high it is compared with the NCO beside it. Observe the absence of a bonnet and radiator on the front of the car. And that it has wheels instead of tracks. The driver's head cover is buck shaped. These cars are armed with either two Vickers guns, 0.303 inch and 0.5 inch, or with two Beza guns, 7.92 millimeter and 15 millimeter. This one, as you see, has Vickers. Have a look at it from above. The commander's and gunner's head cover is slightly raised above the turret, while the revolving periscope enables the commander to obtain a clear all-round view. This is a view from behind the guy. Note the cover of the engine and the wireless mast and fittings and get a general view of its rather buck-shaped appearance as it draws away. See how different it is from this armoured car, which is, as a matter of fact, French. You couldn't mistake one for the other. Our buck-shaped looking vehicle and this chap, with his small turret and long flat body over the rear wheels. 